Mass Barnkopf from Kaiser Power Electronics here. Welcome to part three of the homemade solar system slash power wall, which you can see just right here behind me. So let's take a closer look at it. I now have the three panels installed on the roof of my garage slash workshop. As you can see, they sit on a rather shallow angle uh, compared to the optimum 40 degrees uh, in Denmark. I have them sitting at about 17 to 18 degrees, uh, as this is just to take yeah, good care of my neighbors that they don't have to uh, look into those big black plates. And the overall efficiency difference is not that much higher. Then here I have the local fuse box with uh, single fuses for each, a uh, total for the parallel uh, panels and a disconnecting switch for all three panels. This is the overall power wall setup. As you can see all around it, I have some uh, old computers sitting up here and up in the blue basket and all the network cables and power sitting on top and a power meter as well. So let's take a closer look at the power wall itself. Now in here, I have uh, mounted it all on Dean rails. We have the uh, Victron Energy uh, charger here, which I can also connect up to via Bluetooth. So let's just do that right away. It also blinks now. At the bottom, I have uh, a uh, row of terminals for connecting the battery and the uh, array of solar panels. Then there is a uh, breaker for between battery and charger and between battery and inverter. Then on the 230 volt AC side, I have a um, RCD for a ground fault detection and also a watt meter for, uh, yeah, uh, trying to see uh, the efficiency of charging the battery because the um, total charge that we can see here on the, um, if we go to the history, we see that since I reset, that was when we put the panels on the floor, uh, on the roof. And these 17 kilowatt hours, that is not what I have been able to draw out. So the difference between what I see on the watt meter here and what I have here on the app, that is basically what yeah, the efficiency uh, is. So as we can see here, if we go here four days ago, now, four days ago was a really good day, 3.41 kilowatt hours from 750 watt worth of panels. And I put up um, enough of these old computers to draw 166 watt per hour. So I was taking out a good four kilowatts of power um, until the next day, which was a gray, <laughs> gray day or clouded day. So you can see I only made 1.34 kilowatt hours and the next day was not that great either, both rainy days. So I had to unplug um, all the PCs uh, here three days ago and had to charge the battery back up to full charge again. So as you can see yesterday it actually started the absorption but did not finish it. So when it came to today it had settled a bit of course. So it spent 4 hours and 42 minutes on bulking, then 2 hours absorption and went floating for 8 hours and 30 minutes. So I should assume that the battery was back to full charge and I could yeah, bring up some of the computers again. Um, but what I did was uh, these all run a Debian 9 stretch uh, Linux. So I installed a program called Power Auto Power Off. So I set them up to just uh, when I once I start them, they uh, start up their computing tasks and then they run for 10 hours and shut down at 4 in the afternoon. So I still have a bit of the uh, evening sun to yeah, charge on the battery if they uh, spend more than the sun uh, would produce. But as it seems right now, I will always run with a full battery. Um, Unless I actually start some of these computers up uh, running 24-7. I only have one single one doing that and that's uh, only drawing 30 watts. Now what do I use this uh, computing power for? And that is actually something a bit um, yeah, dull and stupid because the, the value return is so, is so little compared to if you had this grid tied. What I use this for is mining Dogecoin with a CPU miner and that is through a 
yeah, Java plugin that you can also find on my donation page on my um, website. But as we can see here, today it has done 382,000 hashes and that made 0 0.44 Dogecoin. Now that is absolutely nothing in value, it, ex except it's a proof of concept and I do unfortunately not, unfortunately not have any dedicated miners uh, and certainly not something that could run at such a low power 24-7 as a small system like this could deliver. So yeah, it's more like a backup, backup system for drawing large um, large consumptions uh, in short periods uh, than it is uh, getting something to run 24 7 because because then this uh, solution is just way too small now another nice feature that you might have noticed uh, in the screen here is can you see it nope they have a new uh, tab here called uh, trends so here we are now we can actually uh, choose two different values uh, from the um, battery charger to uh, monitor so let's see, I want to say solar power and battery voltage. And it, it's a little dumb because it's like auto adjusting the, um, the scales and uh, the same, the uh, time frame you have to uh, adjust yourself with these uh, zoom buttons and you can then also move, move the data and go back to live view. And you can uh, look at the solar voltage current power and battery voltage and current. Now, if I had had the extension battery um, monitor, I would also be able to see the battery temperature and load current. Um, the load current is also for those battery chargers that has the uh, load uh, terminals directly on them and not requiring a... Um, or th those where you will take a load that is the same voltage as the battery. And not as here where I use a inverter. So yeah, that's uh, also quite nice to uh, be able to uh, monitor how the panels behave during uh, partly clouding and such. Uh, that's a nice new feature, there, but they still need to do a little work on making it able to adjust the scales and such. And then another really stupid thing about this is that this app just uh, kills the Bluetooth connection every time you leave it or you change to a browser. So you lose your trend data. You can't even save your trend data. So you all actually have to screenshot this in order to save it. So that's not quite nice. I would really like a recording option to my device here so I could uh, get a CSV file out or something like that. So hopefully uh, we will see that in the future from uh, Victron. Thank you for watching. Part 3, uh, where we took a look at my power wall and the uh, first 7 days of the setup working. So I will do a part 4 follow-up video once the setup has been running for a substantial amount of time and I have a better idea of how much power I can draw out of it and how I can maybe peak, um, yeah, have some peak usage during the day and so on. So until next time, see ya.